Hey everybody, Ryan Whedon here with this week's edition of Balayage Online. I have something cool in store for you. Today, I'm gonna show you how to shave your head properly at home. No, is that what we're doing today? Oh, okay. Oh, but I've, we're in quarantine still and I just figured we need to do something to spice up our life, so I was gonna show you how to shave my head and, okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll give you something a little bit more beneficial that you can actually use in the salon. I've got something cool to show to you today. It's a new look, a new express look I created just for you. For those clients, maybe after quarantine, when you're just trying to fit everybody in, that we maybe can give them something to get them by until their real appointment comes. Because we're gonna be flooded with clients. We're gonna have so many people banging on our door. Can I get in? Can I reschedule? But you really can't take 40 clients in a day and that's what it's gonna take to catch up. So we need to find a way to give our clients an express service not all of them, but some of them are gonna be crazy color corrections. We'll talk about that later in a later video. But for some of those clients that just need a little pick-me-up after the quarantine is over, then this is a look for them. It's called Underlights. Underlights, cool name, right? I was in my underwear and I was thinking about it. No, Underlights is a cool express face framing technique. And what it does is it adds a nice, beautiful glow to the face. It's uh, kind of the opposite of sun-kissed highlights, which are how balayage really started to get its popularity, where you make it look like the hair has been kissed by the sun. But under lights, what this is gonna do, it's actually gonna frame the face. When they put it back, it's gonna look really magical. It's almost like a convertible balayage type of a look, and I know I've shown that before, I think, in the past, like that convertible balayage where down it looks one way and then back it looks another way. So this is gonna be a really cool face framing technique called under lights and it's ex expressed service that is going to lighten up your client's life. Stay tuned for under lights. For this look, I'm gonna grab my Framar suction bowl, my Kevin Murphy styling tail comb, a handful of Framar gator grip clips, say that five times fast, the balayage bestie film dispenser also by Framar, and the Framar Power Painter, in pink, of course. For lightener, my go-to is gonna be the Wella Free Lights Clay. I love it for its consistency, strong lift, and predictability. One thing I never used to do, which I always do now, is measure out my lightener for consistent results. I like my clay a little bit looser, so I'm gonna start with a one to two ratio. One part clay to two parts developer. Because it's a mannequin, I'm gonna use 40 volume free lights developer. To stay consistent with our one to two ratio, I mixed 16 grams of lightener to 32 grams of developer. The target consistency is that of like a paste. Still loose, but not dripping all over the place. Next, we add an eighth of an ounce of Brazilian Bond Builder, which is our bond protector. It's important to put this in after you've already mixed the lightener and developer so that it doesn't interfere with the consistency or the ratio. At this point, if you need to add more powder, which in this case I did, because it loosened up the mixture just enough so that it was a little bit too loose for my liking. So I wanted to stiffen it back up a bit. Oh yeah, that's how I like it. Now let's take a look at our beautiful model prior to the under lights application. She has about a natural level six, a little bit on the warmer side all around. She doesn't have much going on around the hairline now or in the money piece area, but she soon will. Get ready. Here you can see we've kept the sectioning very simple. We took a halo parting around the hairline here about an inch deep, sectioned off the top here, pulled it back into one section, leaving the entire back section out See how that's clipped away there. And then on each side, drop these side sections out here on each side. I put these clips in there too because they're really pretty. They're from Ricky's and I've never really had a chance to use them. So here we go. Same thing on this side. Because it's an express service, I'm keeping the sectioning very simple so we can get our client in and get her out with awesome hair. I took first a halo section starting from her natural part, which happens to be on the left side here, all the way around through the sides to just behind the ear. Then I took the entire section down the middle here, 
put it together, clipped it out of the way, as you can see here. I'm leaving the entire back section behind the front halo section clipped out of the way. Then on the sides here, I sectioned those off from about mid-recession on each side, and then I've basically, I, let me start over. <laughs> I basically have three sections that I'm gonna be working with. Side one, side two, and then the top section here, which I'm gonna split into two sections on each side of the part, but I'll explain that more when I get to the top section. Let's start on the sides. Starting on the side section here on the right side, I'm only gonna take this in two sections. If I wanted to, I could really take it in one section if I wanted to make it super express. But here, I'm gonna take my sectioning comb, use the tail of it, split the section into two equally weighted sections. I'm gonna clean that section up here, and because it's called under lights, I'm focusing the brightness on the underside of this piece here. I'm gonna put a little bit of product on my brush, and then start elevating it, like so, and then start painting about four or five inches away from the roots where I wanna actually end up. So with short controlled strokes, I'm pasting on, pasting on, I'm painting on the paste. <laughs> it's kind of like a paste, so that's why I'm putting it on here. It's kind of like the, maybe you used to eat glue in, in kindergarten. Well, this is probably the same consistency. <laughs> so I'm working my way toward the hairline here. Because this section is a little bit behind the front section here, which I wanna take all the way to the face, all the way to the roots there, then I'm not necessarily worried about bringing this all the way up there as well. I want this to be more of an ombre balayage type look. So I'm lightly bringing it closer to the roots, but not all the way in. I'm also gonna weight it a little bit heavier toward the recession up here so that when it falls, it'll have that slight half V, a little bit higher on this side, a little bit lower on this side here. Saturation is key when you're using clay lightener. Because the product sits on the surface and penetrates just a couple of layers deep, depending on the thickness, you wanna make sure that you put enough product on there to really encapsulate that lifting power. Clean that up a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is start to drag it through the ends here. Clean up the edges there. If I wanna push through those ends there for some extra brightness, I can. I just wanna make sure that I check the opposite side for blend. I only wanna push through on the finer ends here to make sure I get that full saturation without creating any internal lines. Once I'm happy with that, can drop it. Following suit right behind that, I'm going to do the same exact thing, being very careful not to push this hair too much. Now in the front here, I'm going to pull it taut again, take my comb, clean up that section, elevate away from the face, keeping that nice tension there, and doing the same thing, except this time, I'm gonna to work to bring the product a little bit closer to the root area for that extra brightness around the face frame. I have a very light feathering touch here because I don't wanna push through too many layers of hair. If I push through too many layers of hair, I could get uneven lift in the middle area there. Now, if I wanted to brush up a little bit like this to create more of a wispy effect, I'll often do that as well. That way it gives it a little bit more of a natural lived in look. Just uh, try not to paint her face too much. <laughs> and I'm starting to like the way that looks there. It looks very cool, very fun, very beautiful, very natural. If you wanna clean up the edges here, make sure you don't have any clumps. Sometimes I call them icicles. I've been watching a lot of Frozen with my daughter. When I say a lot, I mean a lot, like a lot. Frozen one, Frozen two, If you have kids, you know how much they love Frozen. So, icicles. I'm gonna paint all the way through the ends here, just like I did behind. I'm gonna push through those ends for that extra bit of brightness. Now, since I'm happy with that section, gently 
fold it over. You can already see how pretty that looks on the outside there. It looks fantastic. I'm totally digging it. We're, all, we're, we're not going for like platinum blonde here, okay? We're going for sun kiss. We're trying to make, be, maybe brighten it like three levels or so, which with 40 volume, that should be more than enough. So we're gonna do that, let it process for about 40 minutes and then move on. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Let's do that now. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna put some saran wrap over here because that way when I actually do the top section and it drops over, it doesn't get confused with the side section and it all lifts independently. Moving over to the other side now, my body position is going to change a little bit. You can see I'm standing behind the section now. I could stand in front, but then you wouldn't be able to see anything. But even in the salon, I'm gonna do the same thing here, painting from behind the section. So just like I did on the opposite side, first, let me clean that up. I swear, I'm a lot cleaner in the salon. <laughs> okay, she just doesn't care. So I'm gonna split this section here, just like I did, making sure that I have equally weighted sections. So behind here, what am I doing? I'm gonna start painting about four or five inches below and bring it up to not all the way to the roots, but maybe leave a couple of inches there because I wanna create more of that ombre balayage look, that grown out type of a look. So that way it blends perfectly with this front section that goes all the way to the face. So now I'm gonna take my product, paint it on. Notice my painting motion. It's a flick of the wrist, just like that. I'm not doing anything crazy rotating with my arm. I wanna keep this nice and simple and give my shoulders a rest. Just working that up toward the roots, but I'm not going all the way. And give it that wispy effect too if I want, where I use the corner of the corner of the brush, maybe adding more of a high point toward the recession there, just like so. Love that wispy look there. I don't wanna go any further, potentially ruin it. So now I'm gonna work my way down toward the end like I did on the opposite side. Now I'm gonna drop that there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the opposite side here, elevate it and paint this front piece closer to the scalp. Keep that tension solid and then wisp away. You can see I always end up starting the painting once again here. I never go and dip my brush and then start up here. I will use this to get the product off so I have a nice clean brush and then drag the product up. This helps me avoid clumps and unwanted spots that I might not want anywhere close to the actual roots. I'm gonna pull it through to the ends. I'm gonna push through these thinner ends here for that extra bit of brightness and drag it down. Definitely wanna check the opposite side to make sure it looks like I don't see any weirdness coming through there. I like the way the product is sitting on the outside. Everything looks good. The same thing, I'm just gonna drop that ever so carefully. Now with both of those sides protected from the saran wrap here, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the top section. And then I'm gonna split it at its natural part. Starting on the left side of the natural part here, I'm gonna do the same thing as I did on the sides, pretty much. I'm gonna split this so it's got two even sections here. They're about half an inch wide. And I'm gonna do the same exact method here. I'm gonna elevate it up this time, a lot higher and paint on the product. Maintain the tension. And I'm gonna create still an ombre type section here, not all the way to the scalp, not all the way to the roots, but a little bit closer than I did on that rear section on the sides. So here, the same thing. I'm gonna to start to drag it down, wisp it down ever so slightly. I want it to be bolder on this top section, so it's okay if I bring it a little bit closer. Same thing here. Back section looks good here. I can just drop it right on top. If for some reason you ended up getting some product on the back side here, you could also just put another piece of saran wrap on the top of her head and lean it back here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of saran wrap right on top of that there, because I'm gonna take this piece, 
paint it on and then drag it and drop it right on the top here. So same thing, like I did on the side sections in the front. So I'm gonna paint it on, except this time I'm gonna bring it a lot closer to the face. Wisp it down, just like that. Then finally, the last section here, same thing again. Just gonna lay on a thick top coat on the underside. Underlights, baby! This is a great technique for those of you that just love the feeling of open air painting. It's a very fast technique, total application time is less than 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You can really do this very quickly if you wanted to. And then all you gotta do is process it. After that, maybe tone it if you want to, unless you want a nice warmer glow. And there we have it, under lights. We're gonna let this process for about 30, 40 minutes. We'll see how it does at that point. I'm definitely not gonna do what I did with Garth from the, one of the last videos where I forgot about her and I let her process for like two days and uh, her basically her hair fell out. It was really blonde. <laughs> so I'm gonna watch this one right here. We'll call her Viola, how about that? So we're gonna watch Viola here, and make sure she processes to exactly where I needed to get and then we're gonna put a nice glaze on it. So I'll show you what we're gonna glaze with here soon. And here's our finished look under lights. What do you guys think? Minimal effort, maximum reward. I am stoked how this came out. I didn't even tone it. She didn't want a toner. It looks amazing. It's blended, it's perfect. I am absolutely fired up and stoked about this. I let it process a little bit longer because she's a mannequin, but I probably didn't leave it on more than maybe an hour and 10 minutes or something like that because I didn't want to overdo it. And this just was perfect. You can see how it just adds so much to it. It makes it look like we did the entire head, even though we just focused on the front hairline section here. It kept the depth in the back, which a lot of our clients absolutely love. This is a great express service you can offer to some of your clients that are in a rush, that just want to feel pretty, that just want to feel like their face is framed in the right way. So. Here is under lights. I hope you guys enjoy it. Enjoyed it. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please put them down here below. I'll get in a little bit closer here so you can see. But here is the natural depth in the back. We didn't touch this. And in the front, all we did, remember, it was four sections. Three sections, one side, two sides, and then the top, but we split the top into two sections along the natural part. But what you'll also see, which is cool too, is that no matter where she parts her hair, even though we based it off of the natural part, no matter where she moves it, it's gonna look pretty. So if we go to this side here, looks great. Right in her face, you know, perfect. If we go this way, same thing. It's very cool, it's a very cool look. It's also why we call it like a convertible balayage where it's like you put the top down, it's just a different feel for the same vehicle. So it's a lot of fun. I'm glad this turned out the way it did. And stay tuned for more awesomeness coming at you on Balayage Online. See you guys soon.